that normally wouldn't be there to the stimulus. Uh, a good example of that is cold, cold exposure, okay? And you guys remember Nick Pianio's lecture uh, to the study groups when we were together last fall. It's basically computer-guided light adjustment, okay? So as I'm proceeding through that, I started noticing that the cold sensitivity went away by the end of the appointment. Even though I hit water and burr on the same area, the same tooth. What he's come upon is sensitivity in teeth, and the adjustments that he's doing are actually reacting some to the edema. He's taking some of the edema down, and the cold sensitivity stops immediately. As a pearl, if you have a pulp that is sensitive to cold, okay, if it's the sympathetic endotype that's causing the cold sensitivity, when you block the greater auricular nerve or transverse cervical a little bit lower, that sensitivity goes away like that, okay? The nerve block stops the cold sensitivity. You can have them do a switch test, following the nerve block, pain is gone, okay? Now, if you're pre-necrotic, then the treatment is on the sympathetic side. Does that make sense? So it's on the sympathetic side, and you take care of whatever's causing uh, those sympathetic nerves uh, to be hyperreactive, okay? You know, our mindset is you get a painful pulp, they're going to have a root canal. They're going to have a root canal. But if you're endotyping and you find a root cause that's, that can be taken away before you get the necrosis, there you're putting a few endodontists out of business. Okay, which is maybe what we should think about doing. So it's not necessary to do the root canal if this is the cause of the problem. And the way you tell is, is with your nerve blocking. Okay, so the dental pulp actually gets an allodynia. Okay, and allodynia is a pain response uh, that normally wouldn't be there to the stimulus. A uh, good example of that is cold. 